So uh, welcome everybody, thank you very much for coming to this FAI meeting of uh, the CEDA Commission. Just to introduce, if you don't know me, I'm the Sports Director of FAI. My title changed this year. They called it a promotion, I called it a demotion. And uh, sometimes this talk is given by my colleague Visamati, who went to the General Aviation Commission yesterday, uh, last week. A roundup of general FAI business. First of all, the executive board has not changed since uh, last year, so it is as it was last year. We have elections in 2014 at the General Conference. Some statistics about membership. We're currently 113 members. This has grown uh, about five recently, mostly because of parachuting activity. The parachutists have had some very large competitions and they've attracted new members. We are a particularly busy international federation. Uh, I'm increasingly spending time meeting other federations in Lausanne. It's one of the benefits of being in Lausanne. And when we say that we have 25 or 30 world championships per year, they fall on the floor because they have one or two. So we're a very busy federation. Uh, from the General Conference, some news. As you know, Mike Cure was appointed Companion of Honour. This is a, a, a great honour, as I explained to Mike yesterday. We don't automatically give this award. It's only if someone achieves a certain status, a certain standard. So it's a very uh, uh, high and richly deserved honour. 2014 General Conference in Bangkok, 2015 in Rotterdam. And we also appointed a new regional vice president in John. The regional vice president system uh, is splitting the world into five, where we are effectively delegating the FAI representation to one person for that area. Again, it's a big deal. John is the third person to be appointed in the RVP system, so congratulations to you. Work hard. Uh, general finances, our budget for the end of the year, we should be at about plus 13,000 Swiss francs by the end of the year. The budget figure for 2014 is minus 70,000. It's because we've gone to the new consolidated account system two years ago, we now account for every transaction in the FAI, which was not the case before. And the head office and general operations will be about even, but the airport commissions will be spending more than they bring in in 2014. Some have a problem, they are spending too much every year, and others are investing. The percentage of commercial income is increasing. Four years ago it was nothing, and now it's about 22%, 23% of the total FAI budget. We have a new accounting system in place. This will benefit commissions. Uh, you will be able to have access to your own account. You will be able to see what transactions are going on in real time, which will take pressure off us because we're far too busy on the finance side in the office. But it will also help you in your daily business. We're also hoping to move to a, a Western Union payment system. Now, don't think of Nigerian email scams when you think of Western <laughs> Union. It's a huge business. It's a multi-billion dollar business. One small part of it is bank transactions or uh, foreign payment transactions. They have a special system for NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and sport organizations like us, where we almost eliminate <coughs> banking charges. So if I think someone in the room, John, your nearest, you have a claim for attending a championship and we need to pay you, it would have been by a bank transfer, in the future, it will be through Western Union. You won't see any difference. We will save 30 or 40 francs in bank charges, which is around 5,000 francs per year. One big area that we're concentrating on with the new IT manager, Visa uh, Mati, is the IT area, which has always been uh, uh, not ignored in the past, but not given enough attention. We have an IT service centre. We have updated our servers and our services. We've moved them to Germany, we've reduced the cost a lot and improved the performance, which means that you can now make use of this. You can put your own websites, your own result services on the FAI server at no cost to you. Uh, you have complete control and complete access if a service to you. We've updated our email system, it was uh, bad before. We have a server-based video conferencing system, which means instead of using Skype where you might suffer broadband problems. Instead, you connect to our server in Germany, 
I'm connected to our server in Germany, and hopefully we don't have the problems that are associated with Skype, with low broadband. It also means we can have up to 30 people talking at once via the internet. What fun that is. Uh, E-voting, we've invested in some e-voting, around a 10,000 franc investment in total, and you will use that for the first time this year. And we're hoping to move more online. We are updating our database system. We're moving to a new platform, which means that a lot of the things that we do by email at the moment, or by letter, even by fax still sometimes, will be done by online forms directly into our database, and we'll remove the need for us to do things in the office. A good example is a, is a world record claim. It currently comes by email or by paper to us, and we have to actively put it into the system. That will now be delegated to you, rather than you writing on pieces of paper or writing emails, you'll fill forms in. So it's been between now and 12 months' time when that will become live. Um, and our new server allows us to stream events. It's that powerful. So if you have streaming of your championship, you can use the FAI server as the base. We have an annual report which is available as PDF on the website. It's a colourful report which is a bit of a sales brochure. We use it a lot to give to people to tell them who the FAI is and what we do. And the first one came out in 2013. And my colleague, Christine, the communication manager, is working already on the 2014 edition. If you have an input, if you can find the 2013 report on the website and you have an opinion, now is the time to influence the 2014 version. The database I've talked about, sporting licenses. It's been a long, long and embarrassing story. Fortunately, Visamati is capable and he has the sporting license system online. You can go onto the FAI website and see if someone has a sporting license today. It's been the case for six months. The one thing is missing is the NAC data. So if I have one message from this presentation, go back to your NAC, tell your NAC to take part in the system and upload your data. We will be making this obligatory next year. So you will have to have your sporting license on our system for it to be valid next year. And you can find this PDF of who we are and what we do on the FAI website, because I'm often being told, being asked, what do you do? Uh, this is uh, a list that the ex-Secretary General wrote. Again, this is on the FAI website, to give an idea of what we're doing when we say we're busy in Lausanne. Obviously, the big thing in the head office is we have lost our Secretary General. Uh, Jean-Marc Bannon quit in August of this year. He's already left the office and he's on holiday officially until the end of this month. Uh, we are recruiting. We have 22 candidates, as you heard last night. We've reduced that now down to six and we are having final interviews in uh, next week and in early December with a decision on the 9th of December and we hope that the new Secretary General will start ideally in January, but probably March next year. Currently, I've been given the responsibility of running the office, so please be patient with us. We've lost a very hard-working Secretary General. He used to do a lot of the administration work, so now we are at reduced capacity. Uh, Anti-doping, we have the first full year of the registered testing program, the registered testing pool. 2013 with five commissions. We reported no significant problems, no positive tests. We are subcontracting uh, the work to a company called Sport Accord, which is the Federation of International Federations. So much like the FAI is the Federation of Sports, uh, hand diving, paragliding, aerobatics, so Sport Accord is the Federation of us. Um, we contract them to do the work, they're doing an excellent job, and we're finding that it's been introduced very well. And in 2014, CVAT will not be part of the programme, because CVAT were part of the programme in 2013. Don't forget, there's some excellent anti-doping FAQs, frequently asked questions on the FAI website. There's a link on the home page. Any questions, ask my colleague Segolet. Please remember we are still having problems with people who don't recognise the importance of anti-doping. If you are on a prescribed medicine from your doctor and that medicine is on the WADA prohibited list, you must 
get a TUE before you compete. It's no good to say afterwards, ah, oh, I have a prescription. You will fail a drugs test, so you must get the TUE. All of the information is on the FBI website. The President talked about our sponsorship with Brightling. Uh, we're in year two of our sponsorship with them. We're changing our strategy slightly, and I can explain this later on in the meeting. We're reducing the number of competitions in the active programme from 10 this year to probably three next year. I'm pleased to say that Brightling consider aerobatics and also ballooning to be two of their most central disciplines. And therefore they want uh, uh, SIVA to be part of the programme, which next year will be very beneficial to SIVA and the SIVA organisers. You will receive a lot more support in many different ways from the FAI and from our commercial company Fame to help you make more of your competition, make more of the event side of your competition, to make it attractive to public and sponsors in the hope that in 2015 we have more sponsors for your competitions, more public, more publicity. This is the aim. As the President said, we're about to sign with Red Bull Air Race. I must underline it's an air race. Uh, we should be signing the contract next week with them. We provide safety services to them. Uh, they pay us some money and we send a safety delegate to each competition and we say whether or not we believe in our expert opinion the competition is safe. They don't have to listen to us, um, but they pay us so we don't mind. All of this is to continue to improve the professionalism of our events. I'm not talking about how we organise the competition because we're experts at that. I'm talking about the event side of our competitions. We say we need sponsors, we need external finance. Well, in return, the sponsors need a professional event. So we know we can organise the competition. We've been doing it for a long time and we're experts at that. We need some help or some push to concentrate on the event side. Uh, lastly, uh, the FAI is involved in uh, multi-sport events. We went to the World Games in 2013, and um, that was my job in the summer. This is the second tier Olympic Games. Uh, it's a half a billion dollar budget, four and a half thousand competitors, 32 countries, 1,000 journalists. It was a big deal. It was in South America. So if you were in South America, you heard about it. If you weren't in South America, mm, the publicity wasn't perhaps so good. But it was a ready-made TV audience, we had a lot of media coverage, we were on ESPN South America live with parachuting events, we had something like six hours of international South American television for our events, so it was a, a good thing to be part of. 2014 the Asian Beach Games is a regional Olympic championships, and we have uh, paragliding and paramotoring, and I can update you on World Air Games 2015, although it's a bit of a slow story still. Uh, this is a slide that the ex-Secretary General asked me to show you to remind you that we are a sport federation. We had a strategy paper from one of our board members this year trying to make, turn this into a, an NAC, an international NAC, concentrating on airspace issues, membership issues. And we had to perform a bit of a fight and say we are a sports-based federation and this is our priority. We do need commercial income, we do need to learn how to attract and then retain sponsors because even today the feedback from our sponsors is we love your aeroplanes, we love your competitions, you're not explaining to us your passion and why we should be involved in your competition. We had a, a lady went to Texas and she's written a report which I can share with you next week she said she was fascinated when she went and sat with the judges and listened to what they were doing and how they made their decisions. She completely forgot the next two hours because she was so taken by it. You need to explain that to your public. You need to explain it to the sponsors so that you make an event out of your competition. This is how you're going to get external finance. Can we please spend less time and uh, energy on rules, rule changes, changes in statutes. We've had four appeals to FAI this year. We normally get one every two or three years. We've had four this year. This is through poor judging, through poor rulemaking, or poor decisions by competition organisers or jury presidents on site. Three of the appeals were resolved without actually going to appeal because uh, somebody senior 
and we're using Max Bishop occasionally, uh, gets involved, looks at the two sides of the argument and says, it's not really a big argument, is it? But yes, you're right, you can make the appeal, and yes, you're right, you've made a bad decision, can we work it out in a friendly manner? But this is increasing. Competitors are expecting more every year, it's becoming more legal, and we need to be more careful with the decisions that we make because people are more willing to make appeals. And we go back to the chicken, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, the, the FAI logo. <laughs> are there any questions to Rob? <coughs> I would like to ask you a few things uh, you said in the presentation, especially about the Red Bull Air Race. I would like to ask how much money is Red Bull Air Race giving to FAI? Who will be the safety guy? Who is selecting him? And if the agreement will be somehow published somewhere? Because I think that the FAI is going around the SIBA with Red Bull, and we also need some money for our budget. And the aerobatics and uh, Red Bull Air Race, I think, is the closest sport in, within FAI. And because it was happening also in the previous years. And yeah, so that's my question. Uh, point number one was the contract and can we give details. I'm afraid, as with most commercial contracts, we actually have a clause which says in the contract, if we give away any of the contract details, we pay the entire amount to Red Bull. So I can't, sorry. Point two, we have approached a one person to be safety delegate for this year. He was the reserve safety delegate in the past. Uh, we are looking for a second person uh, to be alternate safety delegate for when the first is unavailable. And it's something I need to discuss with members in this room, but also outside of the room, uh, because, uh, and I have to underline again, Red Bull is an air race, contract states it is an air race. I do understand and I do sympathise. You do use a lot of aerobatic pilots and you do use a lot of aerobatic aeroplanes. But under FAI constitution and rules, it's a race and not an aerobatic competition. Yeah, but as you stated, there is a lot of aerobatics pilots involved and we also have some championships and as you know, they already have uh, dates set it up. So they are actually quite limiting us by selecting dates for our championships or SIVA championships. So that's, that's why I'm asking, because I think it's influencing us quite well. And even no information is coming, just that Red Bull Air Race is going to start and nothing else. So that's why I asked. No further questions. Thank you. I'm going to get off quite lightly, I think. Um, we have been talking to Red Bull for about four months. We learned of their plans for their races almost the same time as the general public did, which was the 8th or 9th of October, when it was made public at a press conference immediately after the general conference in Malaysia. We have no influence over what they choose to do. Um, so I'm sorry about the clashing competitions. What can we do? I recognise it's a, it's, a, it's a problem. I also recognise that the General Aviation Commission, believe it or not, say it's air racing. They have air racing and they are asking the same questions. It's not uh, uh, an FAI competition in the same way as Texas was this year. We are selling the service to them. And that's as far as it goes with the FAI. Okay, so one more question. You just said no more questions. <laughs> So, sorry, is there please any representative of Red Bull Air Race to explain us? Thank you. Explain what? Yeah, what is the definition of Air Race actually? That would be really important to get this one. Okay, but well, I can't speak for Red Bull. Exactly, that's why I asked. No more questions, thank you.
will the blood of test be uh, available to the guys who were involved in them? I mean, uh, they need to send the information to the tested uh, pilots, whether the uh, test were positive or negative? Okay. You, do you know that some of your pilots were well tested? Okay. There is a central uh, reporting system in WADA. It's called Adams Anti-Doping Administration and Management. And all tests around the world on all people are registered on Adams. We do nothing if it's a negative test. If it's a positive test, then the pilot is, is contacted immediately as a first person to contact. So if it's a negative, they won't get any email? Correct. But you can contact my colleague, Sailor who will give the information to the pilot and the pilot's NAC. But to nobody else, not the team leader, not the fellow colleague, obviously it's private information. No, no, the, I, I mean the pilots. Yes, you can contact Segalen, antidoping at fai.org. But you said it's already clear that uh, all the tests were negative in, uh, in zero countries. We know of, uh, I'm not entirely sure, but it's, it's around 20 at international competitions, FAI competitions. And with our registered testing pool, we are obliged to make a certain number of tests. And this year, it's been in, in the region of 10 to 12. So uh, we know of about 30 tests, and so far, all negative. We have had one problem with somebody who did not have a TUE. We've successfully avoided a situation, but that's not normal at all. If you, if you are on a prescribed medication and you have a drugs test and fail, you will fail. There is no coming back afterwards. I'll continue on that phone, Mike. Okay, thank you very much, Rob. Um, it's quite interesting to see and uh, to listen that uh, for next year, Brightling would like to have uh, not what was planned earlier, 10 events. They, see, uh, they now say that it would be three events next year. And one of these events would be aerobatics. Uh, though I would like to ask Mr. Rob Hughes that in the future it would be more fun perhaps to be able to have information about this so we don't read it in the minutes from executive board that aerobatics will be involved. I think it would be uh, perhaps a little bit better for the future. Thank you. Could I comment on that? Um, we have started a company called Fame. We have employed a chief executive to run the company, and I'm quite happy to report to you that I also have problems with the way that the company is being run. And I also have problems with the complete lack of communication that there has been for the last 15 months. And last Thursday, uh, we had a meeting of several Fame directors being the new one, Pierre Duval, uh, and Jean-Marc Badon, and somebody else, I can't remember. Um, and the good news is, with the absence of the Secretary General, there now is a, uh, a replacement person, which is me, who is a lot more willing to speak his own mind and to say what he's thinking. The last Secretary General was far too polite, for my opinion. And during the meeting, I said, where are the bloody emails? Where is the information to our ASCs? How can you complain that a com competition organizer is not doing the right thing when you have not told them what they should be doing? Where is the information for Brightling next year? And the poor chief executive sat in his chair very quietly and apologized and promised to do better. I can show you emails from two days ago when I said, I'm going to a commission meeting this week. What is the message? What do I tell them? So they have taken the message, and they know they must communicate better. Thank you. That uh, for sure will be better than in the future, if I understand what you said. Yes. 